Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem shift 2D grid. We're given a 2D grid of dimensions m by n and we're given an integer k. We need to shift the grid k times. Now a shift operation is more simple than it might seem. You can read this description to get the precise idea of it. But basically what it means is suppose k equals one, then we would basically take every single integer, shift it to the right by one. Now, what about the last value in a row? Well, this one can't be shifted to the right, so it's gonna be shifted in an intuitive position. It's gonna be shifted to the next position in the next row. Well, the first position in the next row. Same, this is gonna be shifted to the right, this is gonna be shifted to the right, this is gonna be again shifted to the first position in the next row. This will be shifted, this will be shifted, and nine will also be shifted in an intuitive way. It'll be shifted to the first position in the first row. So it's pretty similar to what would happen in an array. Suppose we had an array of three values. We would wanna shift this one over here, shift this one over here, and then this one can't be shifted, so this would go all the way back at the beginning. The only thing that makes this problem kind of complicated is it has two dimensions and it's kind of hard to do these types of things in two dimensions. It can get very complicated if you try to do it in a really manual way with a bunch of like if statements, right? Okay, if it's at the end of the row, then we have to do this. If it's at the last value in the last row, then we have to do that. That's a possible way to do it, but it's not the most elegant. So the approach I'm gonna take is as if we had the array be a one-dimensional array rather than a two-dimensional one. Let me show you how exactly I'm gonna do that. First, let's understand that the number of rows is the M dimension. The number of columns is the N dimension. So if this were actually a one dimensional array, the number of values in that array would be M times N. So that makes sense so far. So how exactly would we do it on a one dimensional array anyway? Well, we know, suppose in this case, K equals three, we know every value would be shifted to the right by three. That's pretty simple. What about in the case that we go out of bounds? Is there an elegant way to handle that without having like a manual if statement? Okay, it went out of bounds by one. That means it's going to go in the first position. Well, the easy way to do that is to take, you know, this index, add K to it. That's how we'd find the next position, but we would take that and then mod it by the size of the entire array. Because then, suppose we were at six and k equals three, so we're gonna add three to it, so then we would land at index nine. Index nine is out of bounds. So we would take this value, nine, mod it by the size of the array, which is also nine. That would give us zero, so that would tell us to land back at the first position. So it's pretty easy to do this rotation, this shifting in a one-dimensional array. But we can make this just as simple using a two-dimensional array. What we we can do is take every value, map it to the index that it would be at in a one dimensional array, and then make the shift. So in this case, shift it by three. So then it would land at index three. And then we could take that index and convert it back into a row column position. In this case, I think it would be over here. This is where the row column would go. And if we can do that, we have a very simple solution to perform this shifting. So now the only questions to answer are, how could we convert an arbitrary two-dimensional coordinate into a one-dimensional one? Well, that's actually pretty easy. We can take the row that it's at, in this case one, and then multiply that by the number of rows. Because we know initially this is gonna map to uh, index zero. We know this is gonna map to index one. So if we were here and then we went down a position, that means we jumped an entire row. That means we jumped one, two, three positions because there are three positions in a row. So on the left side, I'm gonna write this, R times N, where N is the number of rows, plus the column itself. Because we know, okay, we went one row, and then we went one, two spots. Those two spots correspond to the column value. In this case, the column is one. So we would have one times three plus one, we would get four. So we know that this maps to index four in the one dimensional array. 
Similarly, how could we take a position from the one dimensional array and then convert it to one in the two dimensional array? Well, we first wanna know what row would this value go at? So we would take the value in this case six and we would divide it by the number of values in a row. So six divided by three, this is integer division in Python. Uh, but once we divide it, we'd have two. So that means it's gonna go in row two over here. That means we skipped two rows. The column that it would go at would be six modded by two. So what's the remainder after it's been divided by two? In this case, it's zero. So we know we're going in the second row, but what's the offset? In this case, the offset is zero. That means it's going in the zeroth column. But if we had a seven, for example, seven divided by two is also two. So that means it would still go in the second row, but seven modded by two is one. So that means it would go one spot over. So index seven in the one dimensional array maps to this position in the two dimensional one. So now that we can swap back and forth between the two dimensional array and the one dimensional one, we can make this shift very easily. The overall time complexity is going to be big O of n times m because we are going to have to iterate through every position in the grid. Uh, the memory complexity is also going to be big O of n times m if you're counting extra space that we need to build the output array because we're not going to be doing this in place. We are going to be using an extra array, an extra two-dimensional array. But if you're not counting that extra space, then it technically is big O of one space complexity. Okay, now let's code it up. Okay, so now let's code it up. First, we're gonna get the dimensions of the grid. M, M is gonna be the number of rows. N is gonna be the number of columns. And we can get that like this. And then I'm gonna create our helper functions. There's definitely a more concise and elegant way to write this code, but I'm gonna write it in such a way that it's so obvious what I'm doing. So we're gonna be able to convert a position from the two dimensional array. So given a row column pair to the one dimensional position, I'm gonna call that position to value, value or index, I guess. And we remember that that is just gonna be the uh, row multiplied by the values in a row, which is N plus the column. We also want to be able to convert the value or the index in a one dimensional array to the position in a two dimensional one. We know we can do that. Uh, to get the row, we're going to take the value or the index and divide it by n, which is the number of values in a row. And to get the column, we're going to take the value and mod it by n to get the offset, or you know, this is going to give us the column. So you can see we're turning two values. It is the row and the column. And then we want to build a two dimensional array, which is going to be our result. In Python, it's mostly easy to do that. This is a list comprehension I'm doing, but you, you, know, you can do it however you like in your language of choice. This is just kind of a short way to write it. So we're gonna have every row is gonna be of size N. How many rows are we gonna have? Well, we're gonna have M rows. So I'm gonna do that like this in Python. And then we just wanna iterate through every position in our two dimensional grid. So I'm gonna go through every single row and every single column. Now remember, we want to convert this position into the uh, one dimensional array position that it would correspond to. We can do that like this with our helper function. Now, of course, I didn't need to write the helper function. You can see I didn't need to write either of them because there's just one line of code each, but I did this to kind of make it very simple. If you wanna write it in a more concise way, you're free to do that. But once we get the position, we also want to shift it by K. Don't forget to do that. So we're gonna to add to it K. So this is the one dimensional array position. But once we do that, we want to mod it by the size of the grid because it could have gone out of bounds. So to mod it by the size of the grid, we're gonna take M multiplied by N. So this is going to be the new position but this is the one dimensional position. We want to convert it into row column coordinates. So we can take value to position uh, given this new, uh, maybe I could call it a new value because that's kind of what we've been using, but it's really the index of a one dimensional array. But once we pass it into this function, we're gonna get the new coordinates. We're gonna get the new row and the new column. And once we have that, then we know exactly where we're going to put this in our result. So in the result, this is gonna go at new row, new column, and the value we're gonna put here is the one from the original row column in the original 
grid that was passed in as an input parameter. And that is the entire code. We just need to do that for every single position in the grid. And then we are free to return our result. And let's run it to make sure that it works. And as you can see on the left, yes, it does. And it's very efficient. So I really hope that this was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe. It really supports the channel a lot. Consider checking out my Patreon where you can further support the channel. And hopefully I'll see you pretty soon. Thanks for watching.